welcome to this class uh, today we'll discuss about uh, uh, satellite link frequencies uh, Rinet emission or model of satellite then uh, tropospheric effect on satellite communication uh, also we'll discuss about ionospheric effect and uh, uh, multiple axis mechanism right? time division multiple axis frequency division multiple axis and uh, uh, most precisely, wood division multiple access technique uh, for satellite communication. So, um, uh, as we mentioned earlier classes, uh, what is uh, uplink? Uplink is the link between uh, uh, satellite base station to satellite. This is called uplink. Downlink, uh, reverse link is called uh, downlink, means uh, from satellite transponder to at station of the satellite. So we have taken some uh, example of satellite communication uh, bands. One is C band, another is KU band, KA band, and then WB band. Basically, C band is uh, C band, KU band, uh, KA band, and WB band are the um, band used for satellite communications. And uplink frequency we have uh, noted down uplink and downlink frequency in gigahertz. So uplink frequency for um, C band is basically 5.925 to 6.425 gigahertz. And downlink frequency is uh, um, 3.7 to 4.2 gigahertz. Uh, basically downlink frequency is a bit lower than uplink frequency for all type of uh, satellite communications. Um, for KU band, uh, uplink is 14.0 to 14.5 gigahertz. Downlink is 11.7 to 12.2 gigahertz. For K uh, band, it is uh, 27.5 to 30.5 gigahertz uplink. 17.7 to 21.7 gigahertz downlink. For uh, WB band satellite, uh, uplink is W band, which is 81 to 86 gigahertz and downlink is 71 to 76 uh, uh, gigahertz which is basically the v-band so uh, i'm discussing rain attenuation model uh, rain attenuation model is basically um, the effect of rain on satellite communications so uh, how uh, rain used to disturb uh, the uh, microwave sorry um, uh, radio wave transmission or even uh, EM electromagnetic wave transmission of a uh, satellite. So basically uh, the water uh, uh, water uh, drop having some effect on electromagnetic wave transmission uh, because it used to absorb uh, the molecular energy. Okay, uh, molecular energy that means it absorbs in uh, Absorption increases molecular energy and the corresponding loss occurs due to uh, due to that a corresponding loss occurs in signal energy. That means electromagnetic uh, signal gets attenuated due to absorption of energy by water drop. If it is a snow or ice crystal, then it is um, uh, tightly bounded one and uh, tight, um, corresponding absorption is less. But if it is a water drop, then absorption is uh, basically high um, a size of the typical size of any raindrop is around uh, more or less 1.5 millimeter that means uh, radius 1.5 millimeter thing is when uh, uh, when electromagnetic wave will add, get attenuated if uh, uh, the size of the lambda value whichever you are communicating uh, is comparable with the raindrop that means 1.5 millimeter then attenuation will be high so we have uh, um, written that frequency bands again then we have taken downlink as example then we have calculated corresponding lambda value so if you have a 4 gigahertz downlink that means corresponding lambda is 75 millimeter means uh, f is equal to c times of lambda so if you take uh, f as 4 gigahertz then uh, c is the light velocity in vacuum so thing is uh, uh, lambda is 75 millimeter 
and corresponding um, this lambda is large by 50 times uh, compared to the raindrop of uh, 1.5 millimeter. So if you divide this 75 by 1.5, you'll get 50. So uh, that means uh, uh, size of lambda is much more than raindrop. So effect of attenuation uh, for this type of signal for C-band uh, uh, C-band of satellite communication, effect of uh, rain attenuation is insignificant. So we can neglect that. Even if you have a KU band communication, then your downlink frequency is around uh, 12 gigahertz. Uh, lambda value is 25 millimeter, and uh, lambda is large by 16.66. 16.6. Uh, 16 uh, um, so effect is again attenuation effect is again negligible. But if you proceed further higher band of communication like a K band satellite, then your downlink frequency is around 20 gigahertz. Lambda value is 15. So it is uh, 10 times large, uh, 10 times, lambda is 10 times large um, compared to the raindrop of 1.5 millimeter. So effect attenuation gets started. Um, so we are having uh, some attenuation at least. Uh, again, if it, if it is W V band um, satellite, then uh, V band is your uh, downlink around 40 gigahertz. So lambda value is 7.5 millimeter. So it is just five times than uh, raindrop size. So um, having significant attenuation. So if it is a uh, lower band of satellite communication, just like C band or KU band, we need not bother much about uh, rain attenuation. But if it is a K band satellite or even WB band satellite, then um, uh, we need to have a combat mechanism. And we need, need to have uh, some uh, model which can compensate the rain attenuation significantly. This model is basically, um, this rain attenuation is basically modeled by LR, is the rain attenuation uh, is given by alpha times of r to the power beta into L. So alpha and beta are um, uh, empirical coefficients, depends on frequency and uh, polarization of the wave. Uh, then what about r r is the um, rain rate r is the rain rate in millimeter per hour uh, r is the rain rate in uh, millimeter per hour uh, whereas l is the equivalent path length in kilometer uh, so uh, again uh, what about gamma gamma is called a uh, specific rain attenuation factor which is in uh, db per kilometer so um, uh, this is uh, if you apply this, uh, this model, actually, um, this model is um, uh, capable enough to combat the rain attenuation model, at least for higher frequency of communications. So um, uh, if we consider again, uh, possibly we have seen this uh, diagram in uh, link bar when we have understand the link budget uh, related issues. Uh, so um, thing is uh, uh, basically if we can if we neglect all this uh, this attenuation inside cables and uh, uh, you know gain uh, transmitting antenna again all these things so we have um, some losses between uh, transmitting antenna to receiving antenna this this loss this is basically the free space path loss uh, occurred due to um, shadowing fading uh, attenuations, multi-path, then uh, we have Dopplers, all these issues. Mm, this wireless signal gets sufficiently attenuated uh, from uh, transmitting antenna to receiving antenna. We have this much attenuation uh, here. So uh, this is just the combining effect of um, shadowing, fading, multi-path, um, then Doppler shift, all these things. Mm, so this free space attenuation is modeled as uh, L is the path loss is given by 20 log 4 pi D. D is the distance between um, uh, transmitting to receiving antenna upon lambda is the signal wavelength. Now, uh, this uh, uh, free space path loss, even uh, this path loss actually, that means this attenuation is basically uh, can varies um, 
upon the atmospheric condition, whether it is a dry atmosphere or even it's a uh, wet atmosphere. So you can see from here, this picture is uh, um, taken from some John Wille book. Um, so if you have a higher frequency, uh, that means if you are operating on uh, WP band or K band, then what happens, the uh, wet atmosphere or even uh, the atmosphere where water vapor or even uh, water vapor presents or even uh, um, having uh, more humidity, the attenuation is higher. That means what? <clears throat> if you have rain, uh, then you have some rain attenuation model to combat the rain uh, attenuation effects for higher frequencies. Uh, again, uh, for rain <coughs> increases the humidity of uh, air or even this um, atmospheric condition also increase the attenuation. So you have to consider this thing and you have to combat the mechanism by applying uh, uh, appropriate uh, model uh, and and again uh, you can increase the receiver sensitivities uh, in that situation so somehow you have to take the issues into considerations that not only the rain uh, attenuations are also the other secondary effect uh, of rain have to be considered and mostly this issue arises um, this issue became fatal for high frequency of communications for uh, um, satellite. Then uh, discuss, let me discuss about tropospheric effects. Uh, so basically what is troposphere? As we know, uh, it is around 9 to 16 kilometers uh, over the Earth's surface. We have uh, uh, some layer. Uh, this is called troposphere. So it is, uh, if it is a polar region, it is around nine kilometer above and uh, 16 kilometer over uh, the equator. But uh, basically what is the tropospheric effect? Um, we know it actually the effect due to the atmosphere up to 50 kilometers above the Earth's surface. So atomic, uh, uh, tropospheric effect is basically the effect due to 50 kilometers uh, of atmosphere above the Earth's surface. Uh, troposphere is refractive. As we know, the, when you will approach um, to approach uh, high above from Earth's surface, uh, the density of air reduced. And uh, conversely, if you uh, go downward, density of air, that means density of atmosphere will increase. So the, um, as we know, refraction is basically the effect uh, of light or rays, um, electromagnetic wave even. If we have density variations, that means variation in refractive index, then light, uh, path of light or even path of rays uh, will get affected and not, uh, uh, it is not a straight line, it will go bent. Effective range between receiver and satellite, uh, that means uh, from transmitter to receiver, uh, will be a bit longer because, you know, if you have a straight line uh, of ray transmission or electromagnetic wave transmission, then this path is going to be the shorter one. If you, if you have refraction uh, from point to point, then your um, effective path will uh, be some curved on. So path length will get reduced, uh, increased rather. And then uh, what happens, the uh, time to travel this path will get uh, more. That means it is uh, introducing some unnecessary delay of transmission. <clears throat> Again, the troposphere is uh, a non-ionized layer. As we know, um, the uh, immediate uh, um, atmosphere above the Earth's surface is non-ionized one and non-dispersive uh, for frequency below 30 gigahertz. Non-dispersive means it's uh, phase velocity. Dispersion basically um, a different thing for light uh, uh, optical communications. But dispersion in uh, case of electromagnetic wave is basically the variation of phase velocity 
with respect to frequencies for dispersion. If you have different phase velocities uh, for different frequency, that is called dispersion. But it is uh, non-dispersive below 30 gigahertz. So if you have um, below 30 gigahertz uh, communication um, through troposphere, you need not bother about dispersion effects here. So up to K band, that means C band, KU band, and K band, we need not bother about this dispersion effect uh, through troposphere. Uh, <coughs> so uh, ultimate thing uh, about tropospheric effect is basically the refraction because the density variation of troposphere and then uh, because of this density variation, path of electromagnetic wave will get um, um, carved on so due to which the effective path length increased between transmitter to receiver and as effective path length is getting increased then corresponding uh, delay will be there so we need to bother about this delay again for tropospheric communication so you can uh, see it from here if you have uh, uh, some uh, uh, satellite in your zenith position uh, in 90 degree elevation then this uh, delay effect is uh, going to be very less. Delay effect is going to be very less. Now, if you have um, uh, other positions of satellite, that means uh, elevation angle of uh, other elevation angle, then your um, actual path of uh, traveling uh, electromagnetic wave is going to be bended like this. Fine. This was the actual uh, straight line but your um, electromagnetic wave gets uh, uh, curved like this path. So what happens ultimately the path length, this path is shorter, this dotted path is shorter, but this path is uh, slightly larger than this uh, um, straight line. So thing is if you have a 90 degree elevation, even uh, your actual distance uh, get increased by 2.4 meters path length get increased by uh, 2.4 meter. I'm talking about um, uh, geostationary or geosynchronous satellite. Mm, uh, so this path length get added with uh, 2.4 meter and corresponding delay increased by eight nanosecond. Fine, if you have a 75 degree elevation angle, then your distance increased by 9.3 meter a corresponding delay is 30 on nanosecond. If you have elevation uh, 10 degree, then uh, distance added is 20 meter and uh, delay is 66.67. 66.67 nanosecond delay is huge in satellite communication. So you need to bother about this uh, effect again. So we are having necessary delay. So we need to bother that delay again and we need to have a appropriate uh, mechanism to uh, combat these delays. So, uh, basically the refraction effect uh, was the main uh, thing to consider in case of troposphere. But uh, if, when we will consider the ion sphere, that means the effect of ion sphere, before that, uh, let me illustrate, let, let me define what is ion sphere actually. Ion sphere is the atmosphere uh, above the earth, um, 60 kilometer above the earth's surface from uh, to uh, 1000 kilometers around altitude from earth's surface. So um, combined effect uh, is basically not only uh, the ion sphere is also thermosphere and part of mesosphere and exosphere. So this combined layer, that means uh, ion sphere, thermosphere, mesosphere and exosphere, uh, it com this combined layer will uh, um, have some effect on electromagnetic wave communication, that is satellite communication. So this uh, effect also we need to bother about uh, the ion sphere is ionized by solar radiation. So ion sphere is basically a ionized layer. That means uh, you'll have char charged particles uh, in this um, layer. 
amount on, of unsparing delay varies based on the electron density. Uh, okay, and electron density can vary based on geographic location and sunspot activities. So thing is, uh, inside ion sphere, we have um, ionized particle, so that is it's an electron. But this density of uh, the ionized particle is not uniform. This density is uh, termed as TEC, the total electron content. And this total electron content is again um, going to characterize the ion sphere, but this total electron content varies over time, space, and ion spheric irregularities. So from a space, from position to position, from time to time, uh, from, um, you know, from, the, from height. So all based on all this parameter variation, TEC get varied. Now when TEC get varied, what happens? Uh, ionospheric propagation delay, uh, ionospheric propagation delay also get varied. So D, if D is the delay, then 40.3, upon f square into TEC is going to be the delay. So um, it, it is clear from here. So if frequency get increased, then this delay became insignificant and it is dominating in case of low frequency communications. So for high frequency, we need to bother, we need not bother much about this, but for lower frequency, uh, it is, um, we need to consider this thing. So ultimate thing is, uh, uh, ultimate thing of this atmospheric uh, effect is basically the TEC. That means total electron count, a total electron content variation. And this variation of this TEC, um, due to this, we, ha we are having some uh, uh, curved path of uh, electromagnetic wave transmission. So ultimately this path length get increased so due to this increment uh, of path length, we are having some delay of transmission. So basically this ionospheric effect is basically sum of uh, uh, several effects on its ionospheric scintillations. Ionospheric scintillation is basically uh, the rapid fluctuation of amplitude, phase, polarization, and angle of arrival due to electron density irregularities. So, um, Basically, it is fluctuation of amplitude, phase, and polarization um, due to this TAC variation. Another one is absorption, which is reduction. Basically, we need to consider that um, this electromagnetic wave used to transmit at a velocity of light. And phase, velo phase velocity is slightly uh, more than, sorry, phase velocity is slightly uh, less than C and group velocity is slightly more than C. Uh, fine. Uh, so thing is, um, as uh, as per Einstein's principle, as per Einstein's principle, uh, uh, basically uh, energy to matter conversion is possible here. Uh, so uh, absorption of electromagnetic absorption is. A reduction of amplitude co amplitude caused by uh, irreversible conversion of energy from the ratio uh, from the radio wave to matter in the propagation path. So some of the radio wave get um, converted to matter. So uh, due to which uh, the electromagnetic wave get um, attenuated or absorbed. This effect also there then there must be some propagation delay, uh, reduction of propagation velocity in propagation velocity of radio wave caused by the presence of free electron in the propagation path. And again, uh, we need to consider the Faraday rotation because um, this electromagnetic wave is passing through some ionized layer and we need to bother about the Earth's electromagnetic field. So due to which we are having Faraday rotations uh, that means signal travels more than on directions and so due to which we are having curved path. So ultimately effect of ionosphere is delay. Uh, delay due to variation in, in total electron contents. So um, for both 
troposphere and ionospheric effect is basically it will introduce some delay in case of troposphere delay due to uh, refraction in case of ionosphere delay due to pc variation now let uh, me discuss about uh, various multiple access technique uh, used for satellite communication on uh, basically three types of multiple access techniques are there time division multiple access tdma then frequency division multiple access fdma and then code division multiple access or cdma now tdma is a digital multiple access technique that allows the signal uh, or from uh, individual earth station to be received uh, or transmitted by the satellite in in separate a non overlapping time slot called burst so in case of tdma uh, we have so for a satellite it may have numbers of base stations and it may have some time slot so time slot of uh, one second duration and each and every base station allotted some different time slots so any base stations to communicate uh, with the satellite it have to communicate within its allocated allocated time slot and this time slot can uh, can be varied based on the demand suppose one base station having uh, uh, more thing to communicate then time slot of that base station can be increased so it is very flexible on and uh, it again uh, it is uh, basically efficient use of um, um, time slots this is the advantages another advantage is the power consumption of tdma is very low so let me consider this example here we have a uh, tdma scheme time division multiple access uh, scheme with uh, carrier bit rate 25 kbps uh, sorry um, 250 kbps now we have a uh, one second or 100 millisecond 1000 millisecond uh, um, time slot time uh, on frame tdma frame uh, for our base station on it is uh, allocated from uh, 0 millisecond to 180 millisecond that means uh, total 180 millisecond uh, time slot is allocated for uh, base station 1 for base uh, after that we have uh, uh, 20 millisecond guard band that means separation of 20 millisecond this um, white uh, border of 20 millisecond then uh, 80 millisecond time duration for uh, base station 2 uh, that means uh, from 180 plus 20 means uh, 200 so for base station 2 it is 200 millisecond to uh, further 80 millisecond that means 280 millisecond then again 20 millisecond gap so it is um, 300 for base station 3 from 300 millisecond to uh, again on 80 means uh, 480 plus 20 millisecond guard band then it is 500 for base station 4 it is 500 to again 20 millisecond that means um, uh, 780 then 20 millisecond guard band then 800 for base station 5 800 millisecond to uh, another 180 millisecond means 980 then 20 millisecond guard band uh, overall is 1000 millisecond means on second of time frame uh, again uh, this uh, this duration can vary suppose uh, for some cases uh, say base station 1 need more then this time frame can get changed so it is um, very efficient on that means efficient utilization but one thing to be noted here this guard band is basically uh, the wastage of bands uh, for uh, fdma scheme uh, in case of tdma we are dist uh, we are dividing time slot but in case of frequency division um, we will use different um, different carrier for different base stations and any deliverable from this base station to satellite it will be uh, encoded by this carrier only and again there is a chances of intersymbol interferences so there will be sufficient uh, a uh, gap that means sufficient guard band in between to um base to band of two base stations 
that means in case of tdma a time access is getting distributed in case of fdma frequency access is getting distributed that's why we have used the separate uh, carrier for separate base stations and this carrier are apart enough um, so that if we modulate the um, uh, deliverable by this um, carrier will have bands but that bands is having spaced enough in frequency axis so that it can uh, avoid intersymbol interferences or uh, due to which will have uh, uh, acceptable SN signal to noise ratios SNR values uh, guard band again in this case uh, is the wastage of frequency band uh, again for this we need to have a very narrow band filter to filter uh, to fill uh, narrow band uh, band pass filter to filter the deliverable quantities um, before transmitting uh, to realize this type of filter in a, a vlsi is basically uh, uh, very hard and having uh, huge cost associated with it. So we have um, so three base station here. We have three carriers, F0, F1, and F2 apart enough. And all the um, thing to transmit will be, if it is um, base station A, then it will modulate that by carrier F0. If it is for base station B, it will modulate its deliverable by F1 for C it will modulate its deliverable by a F2 carrier. Then we will have bands. This band is very, uh, should be apart enough uh, over the in frequency axis. And again, we need to have a very sharp band pass filter to transmit this type of signals. Now this, um, we are having some guard band in between these two bands, but just in uh, uh, base stations, and this guard band also the wastage of frequency uh, bands. So ultimately, uh, if we conclude, a TDMA is uh, basically we are dividing the time slots of a time axis. FDMA we are distributing uh, the frequency bands. The entire frequency band for communication is getting divided um, by number of parts, as many as base stations are there. So ultimately, we are dividing the issues. If it is a time um, TDMA scheme, so enter time on base station is not having the access of enter time of communication. If it is the FDMA, then on base station is not having the enter bandwidth to communicate. So there is a, that is a problem, definite problem. So that problem is uh, get resolved in a code division multiple access. In case of CDMA scheme, each and every base station dynamically allocated um, separate codes. This code is basically um, uh, uh, orthogonal code, orthogonal code, very good orthogonal code having a very um, good autocorrelation and cross correlation uh, factor. So um, this code is basically called uh, pseudo random noise code or PN code. Um, so, uh, encoded signal of any base station is basically original data, that means original information data, uh, multiplied by PN sequence, pseudo-random noise sequence. The basic advantage of this type of communication is um, this type of um, any base station uh, to communicate with the satellite. Uh, unlike uh, TDMA, it is having the entire time access. Uh, unlike FDMA, it is having the entire bandwidth to communicate. Because when two base station or more than two base station communicate at the same time, it is communicating uh, with the help of its own code, uh, own PN code. And if it is modulating its signal, encoding its signal by using its own code, um, and as the codes are orthogonal, so there is no chances for overlapping the signals or uh, having ISIs, intersymbol um, inter interferences. Uh, but at the same time, it is using the inter bandwidth of communication, inter time duration of communication. So it's a definite uh, advantage over the TDMA or FDMA schemes. Basically, satellite uses CDMA scheme 
uh, nowadays are combination of TDMA and FDMA schemes. So uh, uh, here, this um, this is a satellite, and we are having numbers of base station, m number of base station here, on two, three, four, up to m number of base stations here, having the deliverable data d on d2 like this uh, having its own pn code so it will multiply this data sequence by its own pn code and it will modulate its own signal and it will transmit the signal to the satellite at the same time with using the entire bandwidth but it will know how it will get overlapped as the codes are orthogonal enough so there will be no intersymbol interferences or uh, having uh, um, having uh, acceptable SNR levels, but it can communicate throughout the entire duration of communication, unlike TDMA, or even uh, it will it can utilize um, the interfrequency band, unlike FDMA. So um, uh, you are having some assignments here. Uh, have a brief survey. On the various types of error control code coding using the satellite communications so that means you have to uh, uh, you have to have some um, survey on the different types of error control coding used um, for satellite communication you have several error control coding mechanism like uh, you know hamming code you have uh, the linear block codes you have cyclic codes you have convolution codes several coding mechanism you have based on that um, um, uh, among this uh, you have to quantify the different types of coding mechanism what is used for satellite communications only you have some reference of paper uh, of cl chain uh, and are replaced it's a very old paper of 1976 uh, it is on error control error correcting codes for satellite communication channels um, we can refer these papers or you may have other paper as well. Uh, so you try to have uh, this, um, consider these issues. Okay. Thank you.